Hey guys, uh, welcome to Unbiased Rugby. Uh, so it's just me today, Donovan. Uh, Gordon's Gordon's feeling ill, uh, but he, he has assured me that he'll he'll try to join us for uh, the prediction show. Uh, Gordon is is dealing with quite serious illnesses, and so he he can only you can only sparingly come come into the shows. So if you guys are missing him and you have something to say, please please comment. It. He'd, he'd love to hear from you guys. But yeah, let's let's uh, chat about this weekend Super Rugby. I enjoyed this uh, this weekend Super Rugby. It was the first time in a long time that I actually got to watch uh, almost all of the games. I think I think only the Lions game I only got to watch half the game, and I think the Brumbies uh, Rebels game I, I, I only watched sparingly. But yeah, let's let's chat about the, obviously the Friday game. Was the first Friday game was the uh, Blues versus the Hurricanes. I think in uh, my Super Brew uh, I predicted the Hurricanes would win, uh, and the Hurricanes won fairly convincingly 36-15. So I don't know the losing streak against New Zealand sides for the Blues continues, uh, which is which is uh, quite quite bad. And and uh, you know I, I seem to say it every single week, and I say I can't I can't understand why the Blues are in this this position. They've they've got the players. Uh, there's just something really really lacking. Uh, I don't know if it's leadership. Uh, I don't know if it's coaching. I don't know if it's the environment. But yeah, it's they just don't it's they just don't have the same the same drive as say the Crusaders or or the Hurricanes uh, at all. But you know, don't can't take anything away from the Hurricanes. The the, the Hurricanes are superb side. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, they're the team that are going to win this year, and they seem to be leapfrogging uh, the Crusaders all the time. So they're neck and neck. I think that New Zealand Conference is exceptional rugby being played. Uh, unlike last year or the year before, I, I don't think the New Zealand Conference is the only conference that's that's doing well. I think uh, the African Conference is is starting to be quite competitive. You know, and I was watching another show, and there's only eight points between the top and the bottom position in in the Africa Conference. So everything's still up for grabs there. You know, anyone can take it. Uh, I think uh, the New Zealand Conference. I, I have a feeling it's the it's the Hurricanes or the Crusaders are going to. Oh, are going to top that log. But yeah, take nothing away from the Hurricanes. Exceptional side. They played really well. The Blues continue their losing streak. And it's the same with the Blues that I, when I look at the Sharks and I look at the Stormers. It's just it's up and down. They lose this week, they win this week. They just can't seem to string two wins together. And yeah, something something's wrong. But look, they, they've put their support behind uh, the coach. And let's see, let's see what they do. Uh, maybe, maybe they can pull it around. But uh, you know, I was reading somebody else's comment. You know, and they were going, you know, in a galaxy far, far away, the Blues win. You know, and, and <laughs> as a, as a Bull supporter, I seem to, I seem to know exactly what he's talking about. You know, because uh, <laughs> I always thought they'd win, and they, they just never seem to get it right. But uh, they will come back to that one. Uh, next game of the weekend was the Sunwolves versus the Reds. I was the only one, I think, in my Super Brew that predicted the Sunwolves were going to win. Uh, so, <laughs> so I, I thought it would be a lot closer than what it was. But uh, 63-28 is a that's that's a hiding. Uh, that's a real, real big score. It's almost like a T20 score. But uh, but one thing that impressed me the most about well the Sunwolves game was how full the stadiums were. Well, not were was. Uh, because it just seemed like there were lots of people there. There were really lots of chias. So they were really into it, uh, and and that's for a side that's lost every single game this season. They still had a full stadium. And that's that's that hasn't happened. That, that doesn't happen. Eden Park, uh, uh, any of the other stadiums, uh, Newlands, uh, Kings Kings Park, uh, uh, Loftus, none of them. Uh, it's always it's like literally 20, 30 percent full, maybe 40 percent full. Whereas that stadium was packed. There was no empty seats, and and that's that's good thing to to watch. So, from from crowd or, or uh, crowd attendance for the week, that game wins it because uh, that if, if if all of our games were like that, it'd be a lot more entertaining. Uh, we'll go to the next game. You know, I was going to put the uh, at the end of the show. I'm going to talk about. I'm going to bring in like a new kind of segment where I talk about uh, the team of the week, uh, the player of the week. In my opinion, who, who I thought so I'll, I'll come back to that, but I must admit I watched that game and I thought, yeah, when they were 20, 29 nil down, and 
but it's so strange, you know. You, you know, sometimes when you watch a New, watch New Zealand play, or, you, or or not once did I ever have that feeling that they were going to lose. There's a team that's 29 nil down, and I still didn't believe that they were going to lose. I just think uh, they they started with quite a strange strategy, uh, kicking quite deep, uh, and it it just I don't know, kick deep to Israel for hours like uh, it just seems it's like suicide. I think it's Israel Folau. No, I'm sure it's Israel Folau. But uh, it just seemed, it just seemed like a, it, it just, it didn't make, actually, you know what, I actually don't know. Sorry guys, I actually, <laughs> I'd actually forgotten that Israel Folau's plays for the Waratahs. And, uh, and I was watching the game and I actually wrote it down that, uh, that it just seemed like absolute suicide to be doing, kicking high up and unders to the seriously tall, uh, a player like that who just he just seems to snatch the ball out of the air absolutely dangerous player uh, don't really like his personal views but you can't you can't deny the fact that the guys are the, an exceptional exceptional rugby player you know I was watching a, a, a quite an interesting podcast and they were talking about you know creating a similar kind of team uh, for the southern hemisphere like the British and Irish Lions and, and the guy was saying, oh, you know, but it'll all be filled with New Zealand players. And I said, well, yeah, that, that makes sense. You know what I mean? New Zealand are the be better, best of, of, uh, of go, they have the best, they have the best team and the best, uh, and most of the best players, but they don't have them all. And uh, if you if were picking a team to play, play the Northern Hemisphere, just choosing players from the Southern Hemisphere, I, I, have, I think Israel Folau would make that team quite comfortably. Uh, uh, there's a, one, maybe one, one other player that I'd probably choose if he was if he was fit. I'd probably choose also Malcolm Marx. So, so yeah, it was just an interesting conversation that uh, they felt that it would just be filled with uh, New Zealand players, and that that it happens, you know. It, but it, it's quite an interesting conversation trying to think of maybe maybe having a Southern Blue Wales or something like that. Uh, it would be quite interesting to have have the best of the South going up north uh, every four four five years. But yeah, so I just think uh, it. I just think it was a stupid strategy. Uh, but uh, by ten minutes to the end, they seemed to click change, uh, and and that I, I feel that Crusaders was uh, was the performance of the week. Uh, no team has ever done that, being twenty nine nil down and actually come back and snatch victory. So it's. It's, it's the sign of great leadership, a, a team that absolutely believes in themselves. Uh, they can be so far down and, and still pull it out of the bag. That's, that's phenomenal. You know, you think 29-0 down, and then they scored the next 31 points to win. Uh, so yes, the, the, the score is, is a, is a, it seems like it was a lot closer game. But you know, when, when the Crusaders finally actually switched on, that was it. It was done. Uh, the game was finished. But like, like I said earlier, at no point during that game did I think the Crusaders were going to lose, even when they were 29-0 down. Then we'll go on to the next game, uh, the Highlanders versus the Lions. <laughs> Actually, you know, um, I've been giving the Lions a bit of a bad rap for a while, because uh, I, I honestly feel they should be a lot a lot better than, than where they are at the moment. And... Uh, the Highlanders didn't have uh, Aaron Smith playing, uh, but uh, they still had. They still were hungry. Uh, they were the hungrier team on the day, uh, and yeah, they 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 seem. Only, like I said, I only get to watch the the, the second half, uh, but uh, yeah. But from what I watched in the second half, uh, the Lions didn't play atrociously. You know, I I, I didn't think it was a it was a bad game of footy, and. Uh, uh, and I and I thought both both sides seemed to play well. I just uh, just the Hurricanes just uh, not the Hurricanes. The Highlanders just seemed like the, the better team on the day, and they deserved their victory. You can't you can't deny that. But uh, it it wasn't like it was. You can look at the game and say, look, the Lions were absolutely atrocious because they weren't. And look, in, in all fairness, I got to look at the Lions, and I got to they. I, I really look. I like Franco Mostert, but I don't think he's the leader of that that side. You know, losing uh, Warren Whiteley. Uh, even Yaka Creel, he's been out for a while, and I don't think they'll ever see him again. I think he's going to go up north. Uh, Malcolm Marks will bring some stability to that to that front pack and just bring some go forward. So yeah, I think uh, I think they were lose. They didn't have their stars, and at the end of the day, at, at, at Super Rugby level for me, it it, it always is. Uh, yes, you have your your workman like players 
everyone plays really well, but to really win those kind of games, your big players need to step up and 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 do the job. And I don't think after Malcolm Marks, I, I don't know who the other big players are. Uh, it's 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 a bit of a worry. Yes, I've I've chosen a, a lot of them for my for my Springbok side, uh, but I, I just don't know. I just uh, uh, I'm just trying to think of the game game players. Yeah, I know their winger uh, Fio Duanti is 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 exceptional, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just it's a it's a tough one. It's a tough one. But yeah, overall, I'm not going to knock the Lions. The Highlanders deserve to win. The Lions didn't play that badly, so yeah, let's move on. Uh, the next one was the Brumbies versus the Rebels. Uh, I actually, uh, looking at my Super Brew over here, I think uh, I think I chose the Brumbies to win. <laughs> no, I think I, I got my first three games right and the next next uh, three games wrong and then the last game completely right. But yeah, so uh, the Brumbies versus the Rebels. Uh, I did watch this game uh, in, in the background. Uh, I, I, in all honesty, I don't I don't watch a lot of, of Australian games, not, not because... Uh, it's just I can't watch all the games and 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 it's not that it's unentertaining or anything like that. It's just I, you know, I can't I can't watch all the games, and so I, I very seldom watch the Australian games. But I did watch this one in the background. It didn't seem like a bad game. Uh, I, it didn't seem like there were like super bad teams on the field. Uh, I just think it was two teams that were hungry for a, for a win, and and the, the the Rebels just seemed like the team that that wanted it that day. But let's move on to probably the worst game of the weekend. Uh, not because the South African team lost. It's just I just thought it was uh, both sides. It was an atrocious lack of skills. Lots of knock-ons, lots of mistakes, uh, lots of ball handling errors. It just seemed two teams that were out of sorts. Uh, they just uh, It's almost like neither one of them wanted to win. Uh, the only person that the, the shining light for that day was Brody Retallick and uh, oh, sorry, that, that guy's that guy's it brings a massive impact to to any side. I just, I just, I don't know. Uh, it was it was so strange, and I was watching the game and how dominant the scrum was. It just goes to show that uh, you know you have to have uh, you have to have a go forward ball because I, I looked at how looking on paper that Stormers pack should have wiped the Chiefs uh, to the side, but the, but they just didn't get it right. And I was looking at it and I thought, you know, I found it quite strange. You know, if you look at how they positioned everything, you know, Brody Retellick's normally four, and what they'd done is when they saw they had a bit of ascendancy on, on or their tight head, the, the opposition's loose head side, Brody Retellick swapped places to be behind the tight head, and that's where they were getting a lot of, uh, uh, a, a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of their ascendancy. And I'm not saying, look, Kitsov had one or two bad scrums. I think he had some very bad calls against him. But let's be honest, you know, once the ref's not on your side when it comes to scrummaging, he's not going to be on your side for the rest of the game. Uh, I think they brought on their replacements at the completely wrong time. You know, how can you bring in your replacements that close to your own trial line? It's just, it's just absolute suicide. Uh, I just think the Chiefs used their bench a hell of a lot better than, than, than the Stormers. But yeah, I just, because uh, Kitsov is a, an exceptional scrummager, so I just couldn't understand why that was happening. And then I saw it, I saw Brody Retallick move across, and I went, wow, okay, I can see what they're trying now. They, they want to bring in their, that's where they want to bring in their power. And uh, it just seemed to, it just seemed to negate what all Kitsov's skills. It just goes to show how much the storm was a missing ever. Uh, you know, that, that enforcer, because that, there was no one on the field. Look, I love Peter Steph to Troy. I'm not love, but I think he's, a, he's an exceptional player. But uh, he ain't no Brody Retallick. And uh, the only lock that we have in our country that's even comparable to Brody Retallick is even it's a bit. Uh, not taking anything away from the locks from the Bulls, but uh, the, even it's a bit is just, he's on another level. And uh, I think it would have been a little bit different if they had if we had him on the field behind uh, Kitsov, I think that the scrummaging would have been a lot different. But I think the game was one up front. The Chiefs won it up front against a pack that uh, are right in, in, in Super Rugby. And so, yeah, the, the, the Chiefs deserved that win. Uh, but, yeah, both teams, it just, it just wasn't. It just wasn't attractive rugby, you know. It really wasn't. Uh, it, it was slow and uh, I don't know, it was just, it was just, it wasn't a super rugby game. It was, I don't know, 
I, I don't want to compare it to an, a, 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 a other competitions, but it just seemed kind of kind of static and flat, and it just wasn't a great game. Then we come to the best game of the weekend. Uh, for, for obvious reasons, uh, I was, I've been looking forward to this game for a, for a while. Uh, not because of the big victory that uh, that the Bulls had over the, the, the Sharks in, in at Kings Park, but uh, just from the last game that the, the Sharks played, they played exceptionally well against the, the Highlanders. Uh, it's just, uh, looking at the, uh, the game was just, uh, if I look at that, that game in, in its entirety, I look at Trevor Nyankani was going up against uh, the Beast, and I think one scrum he got the ascendancy over the Beast, uh, just that one, and then then the Beast. Uh, that's why I, I, I've chosen the Beast over uh, uh, over Kitsov to start for the Springboks because there was one bad scrum, and then the Beast seemed to change the way that he played, and he got into the game again. So just goes to show. Uh, a different level of maturity, a different level of understanding of how to play uh, play the front row. So yeah, it, it was. But uh, looking at Trevor Jankani, he's this guy's a solid. He's solid, and uh, 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 from that game, I realised that my personal choice of having uh, the beast and uh, Aka and uh, Trevor Jankani playing starting for the Springboks was 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 founded because uh, it just seemed it was it it was a battle. Uh, and that's that's what we wanted. Uh, plays that stood out for me were uh, Kerr and Bosch played an exceptional game, uh, even with that yellow card, which was oh, real brain fart moment. <laughs> Put your foot down and trip someone. But but yeah, he, he also exceptionally well. Uh, he, he chops and changes. Uh, I think uh, the the nice thing what the Bulls did was uh, they they closed down the space between for Lukanya Am and uh, Mokazola and Pimpi. You know they closed that space down so that you know the the game players couldn't actually get the game going. Uh, but let's let's in all fairness, uh, the the uh, the Bulls back row uh, won that game. Uh, back line won that game. Jesse Krill, ap- exceptional game. Warwick Hollant is just he's on another level. Uh, ball handling skills and just the way that he played and the and the way that he, he manages that game. Andre Pollard also managed that game really well. The only time that the, the Sharks started coming back into it was when obviously the Dupree brothers got involved and they started playing a lot more direct up the centre. Uh, and it was quite quite interesting because I was watching Nick Mallett after the show and he was talking about, you know, the one thing that the Bulls did really well was, you know, you could see they got really good coaching and say, you know, the whole defensive line is, is really good. Uh, and it seems when they're passing the ball down the line, there's, there's a there's a plan. They never go out of uh, out of their position. Whereas the the, the Sharks backline was very very deep. It, it just it just didn't make sense uh, what they were trying to achieve. But the Bulls one, you could see they were well trained, and uh, and I think that was the the major difference. But when the Sharks started playing a lot more direct, coming straight up the centre, it started showing the, the, the cracks in the, the the Bulls defense. And I think uh, when we can get that right, when we can play that expansive game. You know, uh, from left to right, where we can make our opportunities and we can start varying it with uh, coming up the the centre. I think uh, we've 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 hit our stride. But if I look at where the Bulls were last year, and I even look at where the Sharks were last year, uh, the 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 skills of the forwards have just improved astronomically. I look at the one trial was a direct result of the beast offloading off the floor and. Uh, Popping the ball up straight into a try. I look at Lurt. Did he score a try? Mm. It seems like pretty common now that Lurt scores tries. So it just it just shows how the the, the big guys are starting to get that uh, you know that offloading skill. They're keeping the ball alive. Uh, John Luke and that they got that chicken wing you know where they can pass it out. It just seems like. The forwards are stepping up with those with the the same kind of offloading skills, that ball handling skills that uh, the New Zealanders have been doing for years. And I, I look at the I look at the Bulls. One year, like think think about where they were last year. They were dismal, absolutely dismal. We didn't know what they were trying to achieve. Their scrums were rubbish, and we just had one coach. We've had a coach there for literally six six to eight months, 
And look how he's turned that whole team around. The skill level has just is, is improved so much. So it just goes to show that, for me, we have the talent in South Africa. I, I, I cannot deny that the talent is there. It's just we just have never had the, the, the kind of coaches that could obviously impart skills, you know, skills to these the, uh, to these players. I was watching a, that show with uh, Sir Kerwin, Sir John Kerwin, and he was saying that uh, it takes about 65 times to, to learn a new skill. So when you learn an offload or a chicken wing or whatever kind of move, it takes 65 times to, to practice that, get it right, uh, and, and then it just becomes part of part of your thing. So I, I, I'd, say, I'd say watch out, guys. I think uh, we know we're near the New Zealanders just yet, but give us a couple more years and I think uh, I think the, the conferences are gonna be a lot closer. I think uh, South African rugby is on the rise. And, uh, but yeah, all in all, it was a great weekend of rugby. Uh, uh, the New Zealand side still proved who, that they're the best. Uh, the South Africans are catching up. But yeah, I was actually gonna bring in this new segment. Uh, I was gonna talk about it and I was gonna say, I was gonna talk about team of the week and player of the week and then, uh, then the least, uh, the, probably the worst performance of the week. So when I was watching, I was gonna choose the Sunwolves as team of the week. Uh, I, re I was going to, uh, and then I watched the Crusaders game, and team of the week is still for me the Crusaders, 29-0 uh, down, there is no team, I, I, I said bar none, there are no teams, I can't see Saracens doing it, I can't see uh, Wasps doing it, I can't see Exeter doing being 29 pulls, uh, uh, points down and still turning around and, and snatching victory. Uh, I just, I, I don't see any other team doing it, so team of the week for me is the Crusaders, uh, player of the week, Brady Retallick. Uh, I just think phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal player. Uh, there were a few players that stood out for me. Uh, Neil Minnell Scudder, uh, ex exceptional game. Jean Luc had an exceptional game. Warwick Hallant, just exceptional uh, ball skills. But for me, I think the all round rugby player of the week, Brady Retallick. Uh, worst performance of the week? Hmm. Ish, I don't really want to say this, but uh, I, whew, I'd probably say the Stormers. Uh, yeah, yeah, you'd think I'd say the Reds, but uh, I just think, not because, I just think they're a better team than, than that scoreline. And and I don't I don't know what happened, but uh, I, I think, geez, I, I hope I don't get a huge big backlash, but uh, yeah, I'd say, yeah, worst performance of the week for me was the Stormers. Uh, best performance of the week was uh, was the Crusaders, and my play of the week is Brady Retallick. But listen, guys, that's my show for the week. I just want to say thank you very much to to everyone that's been uh, following my channel. Uh, I really, really have enjoyed uh, the the Springbok series that I've done. I've had 30, 40 comments, maybe even more, more comments of people that are just as passionate about Springbok rugby as I am. And I, I really appreciate it. And listen, guys, if you could share my video, I'd appreciate it. If you could give it a thumbs up, if you could like it, it would be great. Yes, I, I had a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, uh, what is it, uh, a moment when I saw I had two thumbs downs, but, oh, you know, these things happen. But listen, guys, thanks a lot. See you next week. Cheers. Bye.